What's up, everybody? I wanted to go live for a short period of time tonight to um, talk about the sacred secretion and um, how it's in geography as well as um, in the human body. So if you, um, if you know the old phrase, as above, so below. Oh, what's up? Yira, shalom. Um, but if you know the old phrase, as above, so below, the, um, the Holy Land is representative of the human body and of the human spine. So, if I can flip this around, I might have to turn off the effect real quick. How do I do that from here? <laughs> So if you can see here, I can place this here, and you can see the top of the spinal column where the third eye would be, the illuminated hypothalamus, and then the Dead Sea, which is below it. Yo, what's up, the metaphysician? It's my dog. And um, it's not only in um, Israel and the Jordan River, but if we go up here and so Egypt had knowledge of the sacred secretion too. So we just, just look at, uh, and so Egypt had knowledge of the sacred secretion too. So we just, just look at, uh, and look at the Nile river and, uh, it's a pretty good drawing. You can see like uh, the cranial nerves. So that there's 12 cranial nerves. These are representative of the cranial nerves. And then you have down lower Egypt and upper Egypt. And then if you actually follow it, it actually, actually kind of cool, it goes down to a pit. So it's pretty symbolic. Now, um, we can go to um, the Garden of Eden was said to lie between the two rivers, the Tigris and the Euphrates. Look at the geography here. And this is what's really fascinating to me is that it even looks like legs down here the corresponding you know sexual organ where the rivers lead to down the spinal column and then you know scholars want to say eden was arguably here i want to say with this science eden is more more likely here somewhere up here where they connect or where they did connect now i'm not a major in geography or nothing i don't know uh, much about geography but I'm, I'm willing to bet that there's some interesting stuff up there. It's a good photo too. See, it's up there somewhere near Turkey, but it really does look like the human body and the spinal column. It even kind of comes to a head. Really every major civilization uh, from Mesopotamia and even, I mean, you can even think about in like the new world is in terms of um, settlers coming to America where they had the Atlantic Ocean. There's always a river or some kind of body of water beside it. Yes, yes. It's also like a motherboard. You can uh, tell the way that the, um, the pyramids are set up. Take a good look at it. Go back to Egypt again. Egypt's really interesting. I'm also wondering if there's a reason that, you know, because they do have the Nile, and then you would have, right here's the Dead Sea, I think. Yeah, that's the Dead Sea. So the Nile's actually lower than the Dead Sea. It's like the Dead Sea begins at where the Nile is, like ends. It's almost like this is another octave. 
but uh, regardless. There's Cairo. Yeah, or, or, or ion, or ion, or like gold ore, ion like uh, electron. It's very interesting. Let's see, spinal column and Jordan River. Let's see if I can get one of those. King's Highway. Interesting. I'm trying to find something better. trying to give me anything tonight. <laughs> Let's go back to just the Jordan River. I could probably put a picture of the Jordan River beside a picture of the spine on a Photoshop. Oh yeah, the Wi-Fi is going to act up. <laughs> Well, regardless, <clears throat> for the people who don't know about the sacred secretion, there is a uh, psychophysiological germ born in the solar plexus of every individual once a month. This is when your um, this is when your moon enters the sun sign on the day you were born, and it happens for everyone. Um, this is if your body is in a alkaline state, the seed will form. If it's not, it will actually, uh, it, it won't even form. So this is a seed that's already present or trying to be present. But um, if you don't, um, if you squander the sexual essence, which is where the sacred secretion descends to, is obviously around the genital regeneration area. If you don't get rid of that um, energy in masturbation, sex before marriage, and proper sex in marriage, sex at the wrong time, any of those things, you'll kill the seed. If you drink alcohol, you'll kill the seed. If you do illicit drugs, um, most time this isn't talking about anything herbal, it's talking about like cocaine or amphetamines, you'll kill the seed. Um, it's since it's psycho physiological so that means psycho is the mind and physiological means the body because of its psycho physiological nature the mind part of it so, any kind of sin that you involve your mind in or that you fill your mind with that can also lead to this seed not being formed the seed represents Christ. It's born in the house of bread, the solar plexus, the manger. Once a month. You can see on... Uh, I may have to turn my entire green screen thing off again. kind of hate that. <laughs> TikTok needs to get behind that better. But you can see that the moon is almost in... <clears throat> or actually the moon is in cancer right now 
So for instance, if you were born in Cancer, when the moon reaches the zero degree point in Cancer, that's when the sacred secretion begins forming. Three days after that, precisely, it is uh, the seed is formed and it's starting to move up the spine. Now, during the end of the month, if you still haven't squandered that essence by sin or sexual sin or any sort of impurity, it will reach a stage where it's crucified in your brain. Crucified doesn't mean to kill, it means to increase. To increase in power a thousandfold, for the, um, the least shall be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. It's like um, a coal oil becoming gasoline, is how um, George W. Carey described it. And um, it travels up into the hypothalamus after, the, after about two and a half days and illuminates the hypothalamus creating enlightenment, union with God. You know, it's just information. Like, um, Shiva and Shakti energy, it's just masculine and feminine in uh, Hinduism. Now, yes, at some point it was Babylonian. Um, I think Christ trumped all that stuff. Here's why. Let's take a look at, um, the deity Krishna, which, um, I have a lot of testimonials from people who take a look at um, the deity Krishna, which um, I have a lot of testimonials from people who, um, you know, they were here Krishnas and they came to Christ and they, they say, don't, don't follow down this stuff. And, uh, you know, they, there are people like that from everything. Um, so I'm not talking about somebody who, per se, converts to Hinduism, but um, somebody who somebody who was born into Hinduism without any prior knowledge of anything, this would be the Christ figure for them. This is how God would be known to them. And, um, you know, that is kind of bad considering um, considering that that was all they would know him as. But if you can see the sun disk behind them, Yeshua became the sun. So we have the sun disk behind Krishna, you can even look up Brahman, or let's say Brahma, <laughs> pulled up the animal, all of these, here's perfect example, the Trimurti. Sun, the sun, the sun. You know, and I in no way want to be disrespectful towards anybody who's Hindu or Hare Krishna or anything like that. I'm just I'm just saying from my personal experience what I've researched. You know, and there's nothing there's nothing evil with this either. I'm just saying there's a right way and there's a wrong way to do everything now. You know, not idolatry per se, but if somebody knows not any better, it's a little different. Um, look up. <laughs> There's the sun halo. There. Sun halo. Sun halo. Yes, I need to do more research when it comes to, uh, the Hare Krishnas. But uh, it's the sage Vyasu who is named Krishna. It's very interesting. I do know it has a lot of biblical concepts to it. And I did have a copy of the Bhagavad Gita for a while. I don't know quite what happened to it. Um, 
as you can see, you know, the sun halos behind a lot of these pictures of Christ. There's even one of the Holy Spirit right there who's symbolized by a dove, the triangle with the Father. Wow, that's, <laughs> that's quite cool. And I didn't even type in anything but Jesus. And you still have all this sun imagery. You have the sun behind the cross. The sun behind the cross. The sun behind the cross. Sun on the cross. <laughs> that even looks like the sun. Look at that. Sun halo. So, and that's also the Vesica Pisces. You see that. Very interesting. But, um, let's see. I'm trying to think of one I can find very easily. Um, I wonder if I just type this in, what I get. I think uh, crusading Jesus's race can be counterintuitive. I don't think it matters about the flesh. Oh my goodness, what the? <laughs> I got this from typing in, all right. Surely. But yeah, if it was about the flesh, I think it would have, I think it would have made it very specifically clear. Yeah, see, there was the, the spiritual sun, the solar sun, and the material sun. That's even an alchemy, too. Ah. These guys who are usually like QAnon uh, make memes and stuff. Sadly, you know, they usually don't know what I teach, and it, it's, it's kind of simple once you understand it. <laughs> See, they add, for all the gods of the peoples are worthless. And I, I, don't, I don't disagree with verses like these, but you have to, uh, to cross-reference them. So here's Ra with the sun disk. There's the serpent, which is the Ouroboros, right? The serpent that's representative of sin. Now Jesus became sin. <coughs> he became sin to redeem us all. It says that. And you can see the sun in the chakra system. The sun right here. The sun here. Well, yeah, when you want to come down to it, um, I'm not sure why this stopped playing, but... Uh, Yeah, when you want to get down to it, it's um, it's really a question of is God sovereign, you know? And um, even though we know the God of this world is Satan, right? But that's also spoke about as the dunya, this world, this illusionary world. Um, some Gnostics think Yaldabaoth was... Um, Yelda Boeth was Yahweh. I don't believe that. I believe Yelda Boeth was um, Satan. So, um, but not Yahweh. See, some believe that Yahweh was Satan. I don't believe that at all. I call that, uh, you can consider it a heresy, but it doesn't really matter what my opinion is to most churches. So. Um, but... If God was the creator of the spiritual part of this universe, the spiritual part that was supposed to be whole, the spiritual sun would be symbolic of Yeshua. It would, you know, what, what proves it more? Some people want to say that, um, that, oh, it was the sacred secretion was a, um, a thing to distract people from true salvation. And, um, that, uh, 
that um, Jesus was not a historical figure, but that he, uh, he was symbolic of the sun, so backwards. Not the sun was symbolic of him, but he was symbolic of the sun. And that, um, and that the sun uh, rising within you is the whole purpose of the entire Bible. It's all an allegory. Nothing happened literal. Well, if you don't proclaim that Christ came in the flesh, you're an antichrist. You were against Christ. It says that all throughout the New Testament, multiple places. So if, if they're saying that Jesus Christ wasn't a real person, and, you know, they're, they're causing people to deny this science. They're not understanding a basic principle of the science, which if you go in the Sefer Yitzira, um, there are commandments to be placed on the Sephiroth, which are like, they're like chakra centers around the body. And one of the commandment centers for the chakra is, thou shalt have no other gods before me. That's the crown chakra. So if, <laughs> if you don't believe that he was a real historical person and you don't believe he was God, then therefore you're putting another God in front of him and you're not going to be reaching that true highest state. You're going to be reaching a state where you think you're the highest, but you're not. So uh, uh, Luciferian, if you want to get that way. So a lot of the people who are stuck in the material way of viewing things and viewing things through the ego, because there's a false spirituality that's led by the ego. And... Um, if you're led by the ego, you you tend to gratify the flesh. And now the ego isn't necessarily something bad, you know. Um, the ego can be synonymous with the flesh, and you know you, you have to take care of the body. But it's not to become overly concerned with the body. There's a, a respect of balance. And um, you know, the way it was explained to me is when Adam and Eve left the garden, it became all about fending for yourself. It became about, you know, who had the biggest pile of stuff to last them through, um, you know, uh, their, I wouldn't call it a famine, but almost like a war between each other, you know what I mean? To where there's less food and it's always like a competition to see who will survive longer. It's a competition, a battle for the flesh. So someone came, talked about eternal life, the slain lamb. And this was to set people free from this idea of this is the only life. I need to live and survive for me. I need to provide for my flesh. So yes, the flesh is important. We're supposed to uh, keep it healthy and stuff like that. But we're not supposed to be overly concerned with it as far as sensation and um, sensuality. Any of the lower nature stuff, lustful thinking. I always thought it um, had something to do with um, some of the lead angels from Enoch that fell and slept with the daughters of humanity because uh, Satan and Lucifer is a title that could fit those fallen beings very well because they fell from heaven and it would be very much considered that he would be a part of them. And so uh, what I've mostly considered is Azazel Samyaza and uh, Gadriel, which Gadriel has some connection to Azazel, but um, they were some of the fallen angels spoken about more in more depth than Enoch, but also in the Bible. And anyone who says Enoch isn't biblical hasn't read Enoch, or they're trying to deceive you. So I've read the crap out of it. <laughs> I don't know if historically, if you can say, oh, this is. 100% the original book of Enoch, but you can't read anything in there that's not biblical. It doesn't, there's no kind of anti-biblical narrative at all, and in fact, it just adds information. So, in the very least, it's giving titles to things. You know what's interesting? about the, um, the Euphrates River drying up. Let me take a look at that real quick. All 
I would have to get my notebook out to find out which exactly, um, which of the two nerves that the Euphrates symbolizes exactly. So w whether the Ida or the Pingala. So, but um, as you know, if you run out of the oil from the lamp and the sacred secretion that trips down your spine, if you don't raise it up and you run out of it, you die. So what's, what's macrocosmic about the drying Euphrates River in the human body, right? But it's in the macrocosmic human body. It's the ending of days. And it says that in Revelation when the Euphrates River dries up that the angels will be set loose to kill a third of humanity. Now in whichever form those angels are gonna manifest, we'll, we'll find out. And I'm not sure if this is the final time that the Euphrates will dry up or not. I don't know if it's the prophesied time, but if it is, which I mean, we do have some evidence for that. You can, you can look at, um, you can look at the Omega forming in the Euphrates River. And uh, I don't think that, yeah, here's the Euphrates River. It's the drought. Not good, not good. <laughs> um, but it is symbolic, macrocosmically, of the Earth ending, I do think. You know, and I'm not trying to get anybody uh, caught up in the Revelation stuff, because when it happens, it'll happen. And it's there's no such thing, really, as a, a rapture in the Bible. You can read all throughout it, and you won't find it. But, uh, you won't find anything about a rapture. You'll find it at, after the seventh trumpet, which really isn't a rapture. It's more like a, uh, yeah, I guess you can call it a rapture because they're in tribulation. They're in tribulation. They just, it's not the common narrative that we're going to escape tribulation. We're going to go through it. God's not a respecter of persons, even if um, you have faith in him. He's, par he's, not, um, he's not partial. I would say he is to a degree um, versus the unrighteous and the righteous, but um, to a grand degree, he's not a respecter of persons. Humanity, in his eyes, humanity is getting bad, I suppose. You can see his evidence all around, even in the macrocosm, the microcosm, the human body, Adam Cadman. You can see it in everything. You know, and there's no reason to fear. There's no reason to be afraid. There's only reasons to rejoice and look forward to the things that we're going to be able to witness in our lifetime. Meditate, pray, read your Bible. Hell, read and study everything. We're supposed to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves.